In this video we're going to look at a few different ways of inserting images into book pages. It's very important that we get this right, so I'm going to show you the different ways that you can do it and the pitfalls of each of them. So I'm going to start out with a simple book page. I'm just going to call this one page one and create that. So I want to have an image on this book page. Um, don't worry about the content of this, it's just an example. First thing I can do is I can actually copy an image from wherever. So let me copy this and I can just paste it onto my book page. And that will quite happily do it. Um, copy it from anywhere. I can also drag and drop onto my book page. So if I've got an image here, I can just drag it from wherever and drop it onto my book page. So I've now got this image in here. Everything looks great. The problem is that this image is tied to this specific book page. It's not even a sub asset of it. It's kind of like a hidden asset within it. If I save this, and go back to my work area and look at this, you can see I've got page one, which is the one I've created. It's got that image in it, but that's the only place that image exists. In general, I don't want to do this because I've got no option for reuse of this, okay? If I want to reuse the same image somewhere else, I'm gonna to have to copy and paste it into wherever else I want to use it. So I don't like copy and pasting. Try to avoid that absolutely as much as you can. My next option is I can go to insert image, and I can insert a file that exists on my PC somewhere. Now I can insert it into anywhere. I can insert it to somewhere in my work area. Um, I can insert it into my content, my local repository, or I can insert it into the current object. That's what I'm gonna do here. Um, wherever you insert it, it's gonna be a sub object of where you say you want to insert it. Here I'm gonna say it only applies to page one, so I'm gonna insert it this way. Even if this is the only place you ever think that image is gonna be used, insert it this way. So I'm gonna to go to insert file, and here it is on my C drive. I'm just gonna select this image, click okay, and now I've got my image in there again. Looks exactly the same as if I'd pasted it, but there's a key difference in here. If I now go back to my work area, I will see that under page one, I now have an asset of address.png. That's the file that I brought in. Okay, you can see here, it's got the original path in here. If I update that file outside of Enable Now, I can click on this button here, Update File, and it will basically pull in the same version, sorry, the new version from the same location. So this is good, and this does let me do a certain amount of reuse. It's not perfect, which I'll show you in a minute, but if I have another book page, which I'll call page two, and I want to insert that same image into here, what I can do is I can do the same thing, go to insert image, but now I can say that image already exists in my work area and I know it's below page one. So I'm gonna select my page one sub asset and I'm gonna insert that. And that will work quite happily. And if I save this, I'll save page one again, go back to here. I've now got page one has this sub asset of address that's also linked into page two. I can see that, but it's not listed under page two because it only exists in one place in our work area, which is what we're trying to get to. However, there's still kind of problems with this. If I go and delete page one, um, in fact, let me go and do that now. Let me delete page one. Um, what's gonna happen is that page two, if I go into that now, it looks like it's there because it's using a cached version, but you'll see under here, image, it says image not found. That's because I was linking in a sub asset of another object. And that's really the problem that we want to avoid. So let me show you one more thing and then we'll come back and we'll fix things up. So I'm gonna create my page one again. Okay. And I'm gonna get right back to where I was. I could have undeleted it actually, but in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to insert my image and the same thing again under the current object, I'm going to insert file, I'm going to insert my address.png. Okay, um, if I go back to my page two, it still shows this in here, but it's still image not found. It's not magically picked up that image that I've reinserted into page one. But what I can do here again is I can go to insert image exactly like we just did from the work area and I'm gonna take the image from page one. So this is basically back to where we were before I deleted page one. So let me save everything out of here and I'll show you how we fix things. Again, you can do it this way, but this is not the best way for, because this is really linked into, so let me move that now. So I've got page one with my sub object and page two is referring to that. 
what I really want is address.png to be its own object within the work area so that I can link it into wherever I want to. Handily, there is a way to let us do that. Um, ideally, I would identify this need as soon as I realize that I needed to insert into a second object. But I can still do it in, you know, I can retrofit it if I need to using a new feature they added a couple of releases ago. So what I can do here, um, from page one, I can say tools, work area structure, convert files to media object. What this is going to do is going to go and find all of those files that are attached to an object and turn them into their own media objects. Okay, so you can see here it will take a whole bunch of stuff. It will always start from the group above this. That's something to watch out for. So it will always go up until it finds a group and it's okay. In certain images is the first group I've come to. So I'm going to convert everything under that. If you don't want to convert everything under that, move it into its own group first and then run it against that group. Now, I'm going to do that. There's another option here under Advanced. Actually, there's a few options in here to pay attention to. Update References. What this will do is it will say, OK, turn address.png into its own media object, and everywhere where it's currently referenced, replace that reference with a reference to the new media object instead of the sub-object, which is generally what we'll want to do. The other option we've got here is Remove Converted Files. So it says, once you've converted it to a media object, go and remove the old object the old individual file. Obviously, you only want to do that if you've updated the references. Finally, there's an option in here, collect all media objects into blank. And this says you can move the object from being a sub-object under here to somewhere else. And typically, you'll want to do that because you want to consolidate everything into an assets folder or somewhere where people will look to find these reusable images rather than just having to hunt through individual objects and find their sub-objects. So here I'm going to say, yes, I want to put them all into my assets folder or assets group. OK, so I'm going to run this. What this is going to do is it's going to take that address.png out of here and it's going to drop it into assets. It puts it in a subfolder called converted images so you can identify these things. Um, and now if I go and look at these things in page one, I've still got this in here. Page two. I've got the image as well. There's no indication in here that this is now using a media object instead of my, you know, sub image sub object image under page one. There's no indication that it's done that. Um, but let me prove to you that it has. If I go to this media file now and I say, OK, I'm going to replace the contents of that with another file. I'm just going to pick this one because it's easy to visually distinguish between them. If I select this one here, you can see it's different. Now, if I go back to page one, it's pulled in my new version, which proves that it is using that media object. And if I go to page two as well, that is using the new version. And this is now its own object, okay? It exists as a media object in my library. The good point about this is I can delete page one if I want to, and I'll just delete that now. Page two is going to be completely unaffected. It's still got that image. That image is found here because it is now referring to that media object. OK, so that's what it's referring to. The other good thing is I can move this if I want to. If I decide that I don't like it being in converted images, I can move it and drop it right into assets. So it's underneath the assets folder. I can delete converted images here. And page two is completely unaffected because it's referring to this media object. OK, there's no sub object anywhere in here. And now finally, we'll look at the best way to insert images. If I want to insert um, a screenshot or another object that I know is going to be used multiple times, I should really create this as a media object from the outset. OK, so now I can go to the folder that's got these in and I can say let me insert this one again it's a different image I select that and that comes in is as a media object so now this is how I want things to be and this is how normally I should have them for reuse so let's say I go and I insert another page here and we'll call this one page page three from here now if I want to insert one of those images I can go to insert image, I can go to my work area, assets. Here's the new one that I just pulled in as a media object. Here's the original one I've converted to a media object. They work exactly the same way. I'd probably want to rename this to take the .png off the end, but I can insert these right from here. And if I wanted to insert the other one, same thing, insert image, 
go to my assets directory and there's my defaults one in here okay so that is how to insert images again copy paste is a bad way of doing things the best way if you think there's any chance you are going to reuse an object is to import the object as a media object to start with and there you can reuse it if you find that you you know you think you're only going to use an object in one place you can insert it basically as a sub object a file within the current object you can do that instead of copy and pasting and because at least that gives you the flexibility that if you do that and then you realize that you do want to reuse it in multiple places you can go to work area structure convert files to media object and convert it from there if it's been copied and pasted in there's no way you can do that okay so that clarifies hopefully a few things about how to insert images into book pages thanks for watching